above such pettiness. Now, I love seeing Black Chrysanthemum again, man. Oh my god, so is he gonna do it? This customer and let these fine folks She's talking him out of it. Back to their yeah. And in return, there's something about her, man. She's so beautiful. She is, and I don't trust her. I, I love his face here. Look at this. Oh, that portrait of ocean. He's terrified. <laughs> the whole bar's terrified. Look yeah. at him. What is that, Batman? <laughs> and Boba just watching. What's gonna is happen? Boba looking at this or her? No! Oh! He did it. He ripped the arm off. Yes. <laughs> yes. And Boba's just staying there. No big deal. <laughs> She's like, oh, damn it. Paint, paint your for your bar, bar tab. Here's That's your nice. bar tab. Don't give a damn about your bar tab. He's like, you're next. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, that was awesome. What a way to start. Guys, welcome back. Thankfully, neither of our arms got ripped off no, by Black thank God. Anton in that episode. Chris and Rob here, the Jersey Comic Crew, and you know we're breaking down. We're reviewing. We are reacting to episode four of the Book of Boba Fett. Rob, I thought this was a great jumping yes. oh, back of episode. Course. This was my favorite episode so far. I want to know, what did you think about it? I really did enjoy this episode. This episode, of course, we see the, the final flashback scene right so yep. from now on it's all in the future and this is what everybody's been wanting we, we want to get forward and move along with the story and see what's going on in the world of boba fett but i did really enjoy the uh the final flashback scene here and it kind of like closes the chapter of like all the missing pieces that we needed right how did he get his ship back how did he meet up with fennec shan and save her life and get in that uh body modification which makes more sense to why we see the the body modification like biker gang in current day i really enjoyed it It was a nice close of the chapter uh to the flashbacks i thought it was a lot of fun and i'm just excited for the next part in the boba fett saga yeah i love the flashbacks i love that we basically pick up and it goes from like all right boba and the tuscans are done now it's like how did he get to where he is now we see the mandalorian episode five yeah scene where he finds fennec and we get confirmation that it was absolutely him walking over to save her when he takes her to that like custom shop which to me was cool because obviously it was a body shop and everyone's getting implants it was almost like a tattoo parlor like it was that it kind of was where it's like yeah like come in he drops some money he's like you know save her life and then the kind of slow but kind of also fast-paced relationship that they have yeah of like he's just done with the hunting in general and and they had that great conversation in the flashback about like you know i don't want to do this anymore why are we letting these idiots yeah, dictate our cool, lives man. and put our lives in danger and also like just killing people for no reason like there are other ways to do this and i think that moment of clarity and kind of time with the tuscans is over understated mm -hmm. because we you know he was with the tuscans for a couple of years i know yeah. we are seeing bits and pieces in a flashback but he was there for a couple of years and i think that kind of turned him into like this you know, not everything has to be just money, death, money, death. And that's what kind of brings him to where we are now, where he wants to be this new, you know, person that wants to kind of run things. He wants to be part of the solution, not part yeah. of the problem. Yeah, he's, uh, he's grown a lot. And this episode cemented this new mentality that we're getting with Boba Fett, right? He's not just this gun for hire anymore. He's these full-fledged characters. He's like, listen, they're making wrong decisions. I have to fix things. They really focus on his intellect and problem solving here, right? They're like, okay, now, like, with you here, I need to work together here. I mean, even, like, that meeting with, like, all the different families saying, hey, the crime syndicate's about to come down and kill us all. Like, I'll take care of them. You don't get in my way. And then we'll all be able to live in prosperity. And it's just, like, these simple and elegant solutions that Boba Fett is bringing up kind of amazes me because when you think of Boba Fett, you think of bounty hunters, the first thing that comes to your mind is this run and gun, you run around, you I like Black Chrysanthemum. You go, you kill things, and you move on, right? But yeah. Boba Fett is changing that narrative of the bounty hunter, well, of the most well-known bounty hunter, which is really cool to see in Star Wars. Yeah, I love that too. And and even in the flashbacks, how they kind of infiltrated Jabba's palace to get back his, his ship, the Slave One, which I don't know if they're even calling it that anymore, but that's what I know it as, the Slave One. Yeah. And, you know, going to kind of scope it out, his relationship with his Bantha, I thought was That great. was great. Um, and, and just kind of 
kind of seeing everything we see in the present kind of affected in the past, the way yeah. he was with the Rancor. Oh, that makes sense. He was with that like that with the Mantha. Mm -hmm. um, and just infiltrating like some of Fennec Shan stuff that he was like not used to, like her little spy droid that went around. Yeah, that was that cool. That was awesome and mapped it out. Um, and like the little things, like them infiltrating where it wasn't just guns of blazes, let's go in. And she's like, no, let's go in quietly. Let's like, let's do this smartly. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of the updated kind of new Boba Fett we're getting. And I'm here for it. I, I think he's still going to be brutal. We also of saw course. that, right? He takes out the Nikto gang with yeah. his ship and it just destroys, just demolishes them. How great, by the way, were the droids, the cooking droids? In the infiltration, the we had the sous chef. Yeah, and then the, the chef, he comes in, he starts whirling his swords around. I was like, how are you going to yeah. do with this? That was great. Um, I like the little droid who was like to so terrified of him. He, <laughs> he turned, turned himself, himself off. off. I thought that was just a really cool, like, that was funny. Um, yeah, I liked how they infiltrated. I also thought it was a great time to show off how great Fennec Shand is as an assassin. Yeah. Um, we, we obviously see some of her in Mandalorian. We see a lot of her in the Bad Batch uh, season one. Yeah. So kind of seeing her kind of get her moment to shine while he's like turning on the ship, making sure it still works. Well, she's just taking people out left and right. It really also shows how dangerous she is. How dangerous she is, how good she is at her job. And like Boba said, right, he wants the muscle and the brain which is what he's focused on himself. There we so go. Having that like-minded individual makes them such a great team. I'm really glad you brought up that line because that's something I wanted to focus on. He needs the muscle and brain for his family to really flourish, right? Yeah. And he said that she has both the muscle and the brain, which is true. But really, when you're thinking of the show's context, right, you want kind of like two separate individuals for that, right? You don't want all your eggs in one basket. So yeah. second he said that, I'm like, oh, immediately... He's going to try to recruit Black Chrysanthemum, right? Yeah. Then we get that scene where we just saw, you know, when we started the episode of Black Chrysanthemum demolishing that poor trans ocean. And Boba Fett's like, hey, let me hire you. You come work with me. And now I'm starting to see that that vision be fulfilled, Chris, right? He has this brains with Fennec Shan, which is definitely behind everything. And she's going to make sure he does everything right. And now with Black Chrysanthemum, whose loyalty is still questionable for now until, like, they have some, I guess, character building and bonding throughout the rest of the season and future like he's starting to build together his family which is really cool to see with this upcoming threat of the pike city get coming down on them yeah it seems like two things like one he's going to be building up maybe like his own bounty hunter syndicate that are going to be bounty hunters that might make the decision to not be bounty hunters like fennec did yeah and be a part of this like you know more income driven decision making like Danyo family and the other is absolutely the, the threat of the Pikes. It seems like the Pikes themselves, they're building it up as the direct threat. Whether there's someone behind them, we won't know till probably the end of the season. But it seems like the Pikes are going to be the ones with guns and, and guns yeah. ablazing and themselves with different warrior types. And I'm still wondering, too, where that Tuscan female warrior is. Because oh. we didn't see her dead body in the flashback. We did not. That's and I'm pickup. wondering if she's going to come back as that connection to his past to help him um, and be a part of his family as he's kind of now running Mos Espa and, and helping them, helping the Tuscans maybe rebuild their territories in the Dune Sea. Uh, that's something I think we might see pop up as like a, oh, wait, you forgot about this. Look at this. Look, it's back. I think that'd be really cool. I just don't think we're going to get that until maybe the end of the season and kind of oh, like yeah, at definitely. the tail end. Yeah. Uh, my bigger concern with this, you know, m going into the next episode and the immediate threat that's focusing right now, what what is the plan that's going to happen for this upcoming war, right? The Pike are going to come down and try to obviously talk to the other tr three crime boss families to try to get them. And they're, they're stating that they're going to stay neutral because, you know, they don't want to do anything with the Pike and they think that Boba Fett's giving them the better deal. But so far this season, this... Everything that I thought that Boba Fett would do, Guns of Blazing, he's kind of done the opposite. He's kind of th thought of it more diplomatically, if you will. Even this meeting with the three families, which I thought he was going to do a show of force and stuff like that. He was all very calm and chill, like, like his people do his own talking. I, I, The only thing I can think of is that he's going to go talk to them head on and then try to say, hey, you guys need to leave. And then maybe we could have a one-on-one -on -one contest or something. I don't really have any glimmer or idea of like how he's going to be able to take them on aside from just an all out fist fight. You know what I mean? Well, I think we had a couple hints in this episode. The first is 
when he exits the Bacta, his droid is like, you are now fully healed. Mm -hmm. And so one, obviously, the, the obvious, it tells us that the flashbacks are going to were focused on the present yeah. the rest of the show. The other side is, you know, he asks for his armor when Fennec comes in, almost like ready to go. Mm -hmm. I think this is part of the buildup where he wanted to be fully healed before fighting anyone. And I think the first okay. attack in the beginning of the season set him back. And then obviously the Chrysanthemum attack yeah. should have left him with no arms himself. But I think now he is ready to go. Like now it's like, I think... I think you are correct in one thing. I think he's going to warn the Pikes and be like, listen, I worked with you in the past with the Tuscans. This is what happened. This is your one warning. Yeah. Leave. I can see that. You know what I mean? Or pay this tax or pay your dues. This is your only warning. And I think we're going, like, you're not going to build up the show with Boba Fett and not have him go completely insane for at least an episode. True. I, I don't think that's going to be the next episode. I think I think no. you're right. It's going to be the walking up. I do think, though, let me know if you're on the same wavelength. When they do have that big battle, which we know that they're going to happen, right? Do you think he's going to ride the Rancor into battle? Do you think Absolutely. he's going to put battle armor on the Rancor, come in and start demolishing Pike? If he doesn't ride the Rancor and, like, do basic... The Rancor also does, like, a Wolverine fastball <laughs> special with Black the Surge. Oh, my people. God! I didn't even think of that! That'd I, be amazing! I, and with the Knuckle Duster, just... I, like... Oh they're going... Like, Robbie Rodriguez is going to have a payoff. Like, yeah. a lot of people have been... Kind of like, oh man, like I thought with Robbie Rodriguez, this would be this badass fight for like seven episodes. It will, as yeah. the story's being told. If you ever watch a Robbie Rodriguez movie, there's a lot of buildup, mm -hmm. and and this is no different. I I we are going to get that payoff. It is going to be every fanboy's dream, fangirl's dream, but I I think we have to lay the foundation of who this person is as an individual, right? We we don't I agree 100%. we don't really have a foundation for the character, right? He's in the movies for like ten minutes in a, in a suit, and he has a cool name. I think this direction for the show, great foundation of character building for him, also world building. I think this show's doing everything that Star Wars wants to do, and now if we focus the last half of the season on heavy action and crazy fight sequences, I think it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait for the next episode. And to go along with that, I also think we're going to get a lot of cameos. And oh. guys, we are going to talk about who could be showing up next episode, even as soon as next episode. If you've heard that music at the end of the show, you're kind of going to know what it is. But we'll save that for next time. Dun, dun, dun. And with that, guys, that is our review and reaction of the fourth episode of The Book of Boba Fett. Let us know down in the comments below what you thought of the episode. And like Chris just said, stay tuned because we're going to have a whole separate video on who we think is going to join the Boba Fett family. And guys, thanks so much for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Like, really helps the channel out a lot. If you're new, subscribe and turn on those notifications. You don't miss any more of our Boba Fett talk. As we just said, we're teaching something very big we are talking about next. So you do not want to miss it. And if you missed anything, it's right here on the channel for you. And as always, I'm Chris Heller. That's Rob Moran. We're the Jersey Comic Group. And we'll see you next time.